Good microphone position. Awesome. OK. So let's start with a story, a fictional universe. Let's imagine a place where your product team has perfectly described all of the features of, or all of the edge cases of a particular feature. And it's in your project tracker, right? It's in JIRA or it's in GitHub. Everything is in nice bullet points. It's clear. It's easy to understand. And every edge case that comes up is like cross-referenced in comment 73, right? Like all the way down, you can look through, and that links to maybe some other issue that describes some other bit of context around that feature or that particular bug. I've got bad news. The real world is really complicated, and this never happens, right? Ever. Like, we have, as developers, these great goals and these great ideals to perfectly lay out all of the context of every feature and every bug that we wish to implement. But in real life, this doesn't actually happen. In real life, we have large pieces of moving software that we're trying to change while they're running. And we're doing this while collaborating with other people who we may or may not know very well, who may exist on the other side of the planet in an entirely different time zone, who is maybe reviewing your code over dinner, and doesn't quite have the exact context that we had whenever we built the feature and we opened the pull request. And this is due to a few things. I mean, one, some of the context and some of the edge cases are probably stored away in some Slack private message somewhere with the other developer, right? Or they were discussed in a stand-up um, that you stayed afterwards to talk with your PM about maybe some edge case that you couldn't quite get your head around and work out. And all of these small conversations build up. And they maybe don't get documented. They maybe don't get connected together in the same way. They maybe don't all get pieced together in our wonderfully well-oiled development process um, of our development team. And I mean, that's just the real world, right? And so today, I want to talk a little bit about some ways that we can adjust and work around this. And so again, let's imagine we have opened a pull request in the real world. And we spent a lot of time thinking about everything and talking with our project managers and working out all of the little details. And we've opened up this pull request. And it's awesome. Maybe it cleans up a piece of code that we didn't particularly like, and maybe it um, refactor some things, and all of your tests are there, and CI clears, and you reviewed the GitHub like diff in the browser like three or four times before you've opened the pull request, right? Like I'm not the only one who does this, right? Where you like open like the compare view, and you're like, does this line make sense? Does this line make sense? Maybe I'll go make coffee, come back, look at it again. Makes sense. We put a lot of care into what we do as developers and to how we collaborate with our team members, and that's a good thing until it starts to break down. And this is because collaboration with people is hard. It's arguably one of the most difficult problems that we face as engineers, right? We've created this pull request that we've put all of this effort into, and we've gone to lunch, or we've finished our day, and we get this chunk of emails that inevitably comes as a result of a like get of this new GitHub review flow, their GitHub review process, right? And it's like 10 emails in a line of all of these comments that your awesome teammate has made on your particular project. And you're like, oh, okay. And then maybe another teammate reviews it. And now you have all of these emails that you're going through and you're reading through them. And the first few, you're like, yeah, this kind of makes sense. Maybe that function isn't really well named. And yeah, I can see how that would be confusing. And eventually you get down to one and you're like, man, that's just wrong. Like, I talked to the project manager about that before. Like, that's totally wrong. See, you're starting to get a little bit defensive. And then as you move further down, then it just devolves into like white space comments and you're like bike shedding and it's two days later and you just want to merge the pull request. And like your collaboration and your working together as a team has sort of broken down at this point. And equally as a reviewer, it is difficult to sit down and look at a pull request and gather all of the context that has been put into and all of the effort that was put into this particular change set and these particular features. And I believe this comes down to 
And this happens as a result of three particular things, three particular challenges that we face as software engineers. The first being that time is very valuable in our uh, line of work, right? Like we tend to, like clients are always wanting things done, project managers need features completed yesterday, and one side effect of the way that we tend to estimate projects and that we tend to estimate tickets is we're, we're always thinking internally. We're always saying, well, maybe the complexity of that, maybe that's a three. Maybe I can complete that today. Yeah, I think we can fit this ticket into one sprint, right? Like it, we're always thinking in the context of estimating for ourselves and the time that we are taking, not necessarily about the time that we will also be spending paying attention to what somebody else has done. And there are ways to mitigate this, of course. We talk at great length, and there are many blog posts about how to be more agile and how to factor these things into our estimations. But in the real world, it's hard. The real world is messy. Collaboration is difficult. And we often find ourselves reviewing a pull request, just glancing over it real fast. Yeah, it sort of makes sense. It cleared CI. What could be the worst that happens, right? And so time is something that really sort of compacts how much attention and how much bandwidth we have to put towards reviewing a particular pull request and putting the effort that's required to really understand the context in which these changes were done. The second point is that we've touched on a little bit before, context is distributed across your team. I work uh, for a company called Citrus Byte that is a large consultancy. We have team members in many countries across, uh, I think, almost every time zone. And each one of us has a little bit of like what we're building, right? Each one of us has a little piece of context. Maybe you have something from a discussion, like we talked about before with your project manager. Maybe somebody else has an intimate understanding of this particular part of the code that maybe you don't understand and you have naively changed in a way that's bad for performance or for whatever reason. And so all of us are missing some little piece whenever we come into it. And as somebody opening a pull request, it's difficult to consider all of that. But even more so as a reviewer, it's really hard to infer it from, from what you are reading in like the actual um, code changes and in the diffs. And lastly, and arguably, I think the most important is people are hard. Communication is hard. Working together to build things that are complicated with other very intelligent people who we respect is difficult. These are not easy problems. And as much as, as a reviewer, you try and put particular care into the types of comments that you make on pull requests, it is hard not to be misread as being antagonistic. And as much as somebody who's being reviewed in, in a pull request, it is also difficult not to read in some extra intention, right? Like, why, if they understand all of this context, why, if they have a better way to solve this, did they assign it to me? Why am I doing this? Why am I even a developer anyways? And these are not places that you want to be as an engineer. And this is not what you want to happen on your team. But there is a better way. And so let's talk a little bit about some ways that we can sort of mitigate the issues that we have um, in using pull requests, like review type. I know I'm using GitHub a lot uh, in this example because that's mostly what I've experienced with GitHub and GitLab. I know not everywhere uses these tools, um, but hopefully it's applicable across the board about some different ways to help work together and collaborate with your team members and overall be more productive. I think we need to start a little bit in understanding about what makes us human and about how we approach difficult problems. None of us in this room were born with an understanding of gravity or born with an understanding of inertia. You know, maybe I learned it by jumping off of a bed. Maybe somebody else learned it by running into a wall or by breaking a toy on the floor, right? We all learn through making changes to the world outside and seeing what the results of those changes are through experimentation. And every one of us in this room approaches a problem from a slightly different angle. That's part of the reason that makes code reviews so hard. How I see a particular challenge and how I see that we should approach this particular feature is often 
very different from how somebody else in this room may see it. And in fact, that's one of the reasons why having a diverse team is so important and such a goal that we should be pushing for is because that diversity of approach to a particular problem is something that improves quality overall. But it's not easy. It's difficult. And so one of the ways that we can sort of break down um, the way in which our communication breaks down is by, and is by going through and actually pulling apart the changes in the code ourselves. I often, when am reviewing a pull request, will pull the code, you know, run the test, that's what you're supposed to do if you're a good developer, but also start deleting lines, change variable names, see what tests break. Hopefully tests break, they should break. Um, and through doing that, you can sort of see what the edge cases were. Maybe there's a weird function or method or class that was added that's off in a corner somewhere. You're like, I don't really know why this is here. And through doing that, you can gain some of the context around what that person was doing whenever they were writing that code. And <laughs> all of this is great, but it doesn't really help that much with how we're going to work together. Right? How many in here have done pair, pair coding explicitly? A few of us? Yeah, see, pair coding is awesome. I love pair coding, and it is highly recommended. However, for sad business reasons, it is not often the easiest sell, um, especially I've done contracting in the past or whenever you're doing consulting um, to clients because why, whenever they've negotiated a rate for two developers, would they have those two developers working on the same thing when they could be working on two separate things, right? It doesn't really make a lot of sense. And one way that I have found is helpful in introducing um, pair programming into a project is through uh, doing paired code reviews. And in doing this, it brings a lot out a lot of helpful uh, collaborative features that I think are missing whenever you're doing like individualized, isolated, just typing through and adding review comments in GitHub, and that your communication is real time, right? Whenever you sit down with somebody and you're in a pair and you're in a Google Hangout or whatever, you have the ability to read much easier their body language, maybe their comment about this white space was in jest, maybe, um, you know, so you gain this extra context that you don't have maybe through an onslaught of 30 emails from GitHub, uh, which is helpful and, and much faster. And also, it gives us an opportunity to work through some of our differences in opinion and differences in context and differences in understanding together. For instance, if the author is doing um, the driving and the reviewer is doing the navigating in a typical pair situation, then you as a reviewer have the ability to point out like edges, places where you think it would break from your approach, places where you think it might be a little odd and doesn't quite make sense to you. And then as the author of the pull request, you have one, the ability to push back a little bit and sort of you know, explain what your reasoning was in a certain piece of code. And also you have a direct line in order which to explain sort of the context in which that you know, may not exist for the reviewer, sort of the context in which you made these changes and how you arrived um, at the position in which you arrived. So in short, as we're working together um, as collaborative teams, which I think is awesome, the, one of the most awesome parts about being a software engineer is getting to work with other um, very brilliant uh, software engineers and build complicated tools together that you can, instead of working through pull requests as an isolated thing, work on them together and sort of learn more about the code, uh, share more knowledge across your team, and do a little bit more extra pairing and hopefully build better relationships. Um, and yeah, that's about all I have. It was a little shorter than usual, but thank you everyone. Are there questions? <laughs> 
so the question is working natural language processing into analyzing the pull request comments, is that valuable? Do I think that's valuable? I don't have a lot of experience with that. I think though, I mean, I don't know. How long, I don't know, I feel like that's kind of, it could be useful. I could see how it'd be useful. But like for me, it's more a matter, like it's 30, 40 minutes to do a paired code review. Um, and I feel like the knowledge that is disseminated in such a thing is like more valuable than sort of like getting a, uh, I don't even know, what would the output of something like that be? Like, this person is generally positive. <laughs> Interesting. So, and then, so it puts a positivity score. Is it like whenever you are, re like, uh, reviewing, like typing a comment, it's telling you how positive your comment is, or is it? It's after the fact. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like a Black Mirror episode. Yeah. So my, I, I would say my concern with that is. Um, I mean, being positive is separate from being constructive, right? Like, it's positive, it, it's... Right, right, none of us writes perfect code, my code. Yes, I agree with that. At some point, you're going to have to say, hey, maybe this isn't the best way to do that, right? And I think that's difficult to fit into an algorithm <laughs> of whether or not that's positive or not. You had a question. My question is along the same line. Uh, when you're reading comments, it's pretty tough to tell the parameters. Because on one side, you can be like, this is broken. And the other side, you can be like, I would consider maybe changing this to accommodate some of the things that you're saying. Maybe you can show like, where is, is approaching likely like, a valuable trait? Or does it really just need to be like, show me the first thing that I'm going to do? So it sounds like you're asking, should we have, should we put more care into how we're crafting the text of our comments, or should we put more care into how we process comments personally? That's sort of, okay. So I would say it's both, really. I mean, and it's hard. That's sort of why I, like, would push towards a pairing thing, because it's, like, I think more difficult to misread somebody whenever you're on Hangout with them and you can see their face, or even when you can't see their face, just hearing their voice, it's more difficult to like misunderstand the context of what somebody is saying. Um, but I, yeah. Sort of do it. Yeah, totally. And I would. I mean, yeah, it's relation. That's a good way to put it. It's relationship dependent because, like, I mean, I like in a team with people who I've worked with a lot. I understand like sort of what each mem e what e what to expect from each team member, right? And like how they sort of communicate, and you develop that over time. But um, as a newcomer into a team, sometimes it's tough to read that out. Um, so I'd especially encourage this, like for onboarding new people. Um, Clayton. <laughs> I mean, so full disclaimer, I haven't done a whole, whole lot of them in order to give like a really like scientifically defined or a, a significant, a statistically significant answer to that question. Um, but I mean, I wouldn't, I, I would not say that it happens any more, any less often than, um, the question was how often does this just turn into a pair refactoring session? Um, and I would argue that this, that, that doesn't happen any more or less often than um, whenever you are just doing a normal review, right? Like,
so that's an interesting comment. The comment was, how does the dynamic work between um, oftentimes reviews are done where a senior review, a senior engineer is reviewing um, your work. Um, how, how does that compare to if like a peer is reviewing it or um, perhaps even a junior? And I mean, yeah, usually, I don't know, I would argue that really there should be a diversity of people reviewing your code. Like I understand that's not always possible and that oftentimes, like you said, senior developers are strapped for time or they're like a project manager. They don't really have the context or the time to sit down and really pair with you on something. Um, but I would argue that that is kind of not the best way to build productive teams, <laughs> that there should be diversity, right? Like we should be requesting reviews not only from like our seniors but also from people junior to us because if we're writing code that new people can't understand, then like what, what is the point of writing it, right? Like code is for us to understand and if the juniors on the team can't understand it or if our peers can't understand it, like I don't, like that is just as valuable as the senior engineer saying, yeah, this is good, or whatever. Yes, this improves X, Y, Z. Sure. So the question or the comment was about um, how to handle cases where pair, pairing with somebody is um, not exactly, I'm trying to think of the best way to phrase it, <laughs> is maybe not as fun as the person being reviewed. Um, that, and yes, I agree. Sometimes that can be antagonistic. I think. Um, and, and difficult to like internalize, especially if you're like junior, like new on the team, and you're like really nervous about screwing everything up, and then you're like pairing with somebody, and they're like, no, 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 this is terrible. Why did you do this? Da, da, da. Um, I think I don't like that's again a hard problem. Right? Collaborating with people is a hard problem, and communication is a hard problem. I feel like it's difficult, um, or it's more difficult to have that type of negative interaction like in person on a call but I may be totally naive and wrong about that. I would say like the best pair programming sessions I've had are ones where we started out explicitly with rules like that um, like if you're going to do like the normal driver navigator approach like explicitly like I am touching the keyboard and you are not <laughs> like you know <laughs> like, <laughs> like that kind of thing right like setting aside ground rule like going into it together with the common idea that like you're a team and you're working on that together and even if like you are the junior on that team, you're still a part of that team and like the senior or your peer or whatever should respect that um, in as much as like you, you as a junior like respect their opinion of like how something should be done, right? Like, um, does that sort of answer your question? Like, if, like, explicit guidelines going into a pairing session are important. Like you should have agreed upon protocols about this is how we're going to do it. Like we're not gonna, it's not just gonna be me sitting here and you ranting about how terrible my code is, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> That's a good point. Thank you. 
I agree. Communicate better. We can do it. I believe in us. Yes. Yeah, so the comment, if I understand correctly, is sort of whenever we're developing, it's often very asynchronously, and that getting synchronous, real-time feedback could help <coughs> mitigate some of the anxiety around um, like submitting your, your new baby pull request into the world and giving it unto everybody. Yeah, I, I would agree with that a lot. I mean. Yeah, I agree. The anxiety point for me is more whenever I get those emails. That, that's my anxiety point. It's like, I thought it was so perfect, and it was not perfect. No matter how many times I tell myself I'm not perfect and I won't write a good pull request, it still is like, ah. Oh. Yeah, that's a good point. Be able to adapt. Have you ever tried anything like this on a open source project? No. So I had some caveats that I mostly left out about open source because I feel like that is a whole other can of worms that yeah. we could devote many blog posts and talks to. Um, <laughs> so, but that's an interesting point. I think it's more difficult there because open source is not usually something that like the maintainer and an outside contributor both have like assigned time to collaborate, right? Like the maintainer probably has a job doing other stuff in a family and the person contribute, contributing probably also has a job and family and other stuff to do. And so like there's not, like when you're working with somebody on a team, it's expected that you're collaborating together. There is time set aside for that. Like that's more difficult, I think. You know, whenever you say on a team, like we need 30 minutes to sit down and go over this, that's a little bit easier to block than whenever you have two separate people from two completely different lives that are not on the same team, more difficult to organize. The question was, how does it apply to open source? I'm real bad about repeating the questions. Apologies. Any others? OK. All right. We can do it. We can be better communicators. I believe in us. <laughs>